shall we begin? Sure. Sí. Hola, Hola, Yael. Hola. Hola, hola a todos. Tú estás hola, en un Suki. lugar nuevo. Sí. sí ¿Dónde estoy está? En... Estoy en mi cuarto todavía, pero ya yo pinté mi cuarto. Oh, oh. sí. Sí, era, era azul, pero ahora mismo no. Exacto, era azul, pero ahora no. No me gustaba mucho el azul. Ah. Me gusta más el blanco. <risa> el blanco es, blanco es mejor. <risa> porque um, eh, parece nueva. Sí. Exacto. Well, sí, especialmente para las clases en línea, sí. En Zoom. Sí. Yeah. Mm. Porque es, es más, mmm, ¿cómo se dice? Es más claro, es <coughs> lighter, ¿sí? Mm -hmm. Más sí. claro, más brilloso, más brighter. Mm. ¿Brilloso? You said? Brilloso. El brilloso. Brilloso. El brillo. Brilloso. Like brilloso. brilliant, like brilliant. Yeah. Brillante. Yeah. Brillante, ¿hizo yo? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, that's Korean. <laughs> Brillante. Mm. Muy bien. Pero, pero el gato Floyd es un gato azul. Y morado. Y, y, morado. y morado, sí, y morado. Uh, hay, hay más, uh, hay más morado. Sí. Eh, el azul, ¿sí? Sí. 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 Clase. Sí. ¿Qué tiene? Ah, lo siento. ¿Quién tiene un gato? Elena. Sí, mm, Elena gato. tiene yes. un gato. Y Jesse también tiene un gato. Sí. Y clase. Sí. Yeah. Sí. ¿Tiene ya él un gato? No lo sé. ¿Ya él? ¿Tienes yeah. un gato? No, pero yo quiero un gato. Mm, tú quieres oh. un gato. Tú quieres oh. tener un gato. Tú quieres mantener un gato. <ríe> sí. Oh, sí. 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 Tú quieres tener y mantener un gato en tu casa. Sí. Uh, ¿Cuál color del gato quieres? Um, me gustaría un gato de color amarillo. Mm. ¿Amarillo? ¿Tú gustarías? No, ¿tú te gustarías? ¿A ti te gustarías tener? ¿Ah? Un gato amarillo. Mm. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> me would, me would like. I say. Tú... No veo un gato amarillo. ¿En serio? ¿Serio? Naranja. ¿Amarillo? Sí, amarillo. amarillo naranja. ¿Amarillo? Yeah, amarillo. amarillo. Naranja. Sí. Naranja, ya, uh, sí, uh, pero amarillo. Sí. Well, okay, this is a little exaggerated, but. <laughs> this, is... <laughs> this is, sí, es naranja, es, es, es naranja, naranja, pero, pero es un, sí, here. Es naranja, naranja. Café. <laughs> Ya, ¿qué piensas tú? ¿Es naranja o es el naranja o es el amarillo? Mm, yo pienso que es amarillo. Yeah, sí. <risa> es yo entiendo, entiendo. Yo creo que es realmente um, morón, no, what's the, ah, uh, cas like castañano, like, ah. Uh, Brown, it's like a brown tan sí. color, sí. sí, sí, pero yo puedo entender si una persona mm, 
piensa que es naranja o amarillo. Sí, yo, yo puedo entender, pero yo creo que es blonde. Sí. Blonde. Blonde. Yes, this is a blonde pero, cat. Yeah. Pero yeah. en cada uh, idioma, sí. uh, por ejemplo, en chino, sí. Esto gato, sí. Se llama naranja gato. Ah, orange así cat, que, naranja gato. Sí, sí, sí. Así que uh, pensamos, eh, esto gato oh. es naranja. Mm. Orange tabby. That's what we call them in the United States. Orange tabby. What do you call it? Well, if it's a tabby, yes, yeah. orange tabby. Well, that's, those are orange tabbies that you're showing. That's uh, an old orange. Oh, okay, okay. Sí, orange. atigrado. <clears throat> Así que ya el. Oh, en... el tigrado. El, tig yeah, el tigre. Yeah. Oh. El tigre. En, en español, no... <sighs> No tienes un, un nombre para esto gato, naranja gato, por ejemplo, o mm. amarillo gato. ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo se dice? ¿Cómo se llama esto gato, este gato? Sí, es atigrado. 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 Ah, oh, atigrado. Así que no lo sé. Oh, ok. Pero Floyd no es un gato atigrado. Sí. Mm. O no es atigrado. Es atigrado ad, 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 adjetivo. Or... Las dos están bien. No es un gato mm. atigrado, no mm. es atigrado. Mm. No es un gato atigrado. Es un gato. Azul y morado. Ooh. It's poetry. Sí. Uh, pero Jesse no tiene un gato azul ni morado tampoco. Jesse tiene un gato negro y naranja. ¿Sí? ¿Naranja? ¿Hay naranja? Uh, ¿Morón? Gold. Golden, golden. Um... Oh. Dorado. Cream, mm. cream. Creme, creme. I don't know. Cream. Un momento. Un momento. Crema. Ah. Crema. Crema. Oh. Oh, um. Hola, gato. Oh, oh sí. Oh, en el estómago. Oh. Es cream. Hola. Black. Yeah. Um. Gris. 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 Yeah. Gris. Atigrado. 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 Atigrado negro. Sí. Oh, atigrado negro. Atigrado. Negro atigrado. Atigrado negro. Sí. Oh, muy bien. Sí, muy bien. Entonces... Jesse tiene un gato. Elena tiene un gato. Pero yo, Yael y Suchin no. no tenemos, no tenemos un gato. No tenemos un gato. <coughs> Ahora mismo explica, uh, describe la situación sobre los gatos. ¿Quién, ¿Quiénes tienen gatos y quiénes no tienen gatos? ¿Y a qué, ¿En qué color son los gatos? Y, sí. Uh, momento, por favor. ¿Hay preguntas? ¿No? Oh, I didn't change this before. So, el tiempo ha terminado. Ha terminado. Oops. Confirm. 
So, and then it's going to tell you in Korean to describe the situation. So you can see a little Korean on, on the timer. Okay. Um, tres, dos, uno, fuera. Oh, there is no Korean. El tiempo ha terminado. Okay, <clears throat> I talked the whole time, more than 50%, less than 50%. So good. Uh, muy bien. Mm, confidence, yes, yeah, see. Sí. Uh, he doesn't think so. Ha, ¿Cómo se dice? Él no lo cree así. Él no, él, oh, sorry, I spelled L wrong. Él, let me try. Él, lo no pienso. <laughs> Piense, I mean, piensa. Pienso. <laughs> él lo no pienso. Él, and creo is more like believe. So if you want to say he couldn't believe or he like doesn't believe it, you'd probably use creo, or I mean cre, cre. Él no pienso. Él pien. Él no pienso lo. Él no pien. I keep saying so. Él no piensa lo. ¿Qué dices? Yeah. Él no lo piensa. Él no lo piensa. Uh, put the no first. Él no lo. Piensa. Pero uh, when you want to say I think so, you would say creo que sí. Si. Yeah. I that actually means I believe so. Mm. Creo que sí. Si. I believe so. So it oh. is still saying that you think that, mm -hmm. but it's more of a belief. And then yo pien, um, because what you're really saying is like I believe that's true or I, be I believe that versus like I think is more like um, like your opinion or like your thinking process in the moment you know I don't know if I'm being clear but and like Creer has a little slightly deeper feeling than pensar, which is a little bit, I don't know, yeah, correct me, but it feels a little more superficial and a little less seguro, <laughs> a little less certain. But yeah, tell us. Mm -hmm. uh, you're right, actually. If I say, yo no lo creo así, it's like, I don't think. So, so it's more like what you think and you're not very sure. Or you can also say it so you don't feel like, oh, this is my point of view. Maybe you have a different point of view. Yo no lo creo así. But you say, oh, yo no lo pienso así. That's more like, yeah, this is my point of view. I am sure it's this way. And, mm -hmm. But they are just slightly different, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what about um, me parece que? Like it seems to me or appears to me, me parece que. Um, sí. Could you use that also? 
-hmm. Yeah, in both cases, it seems to me. Yeah. It seems to me that whatever. You know. mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so you're saying it's the opposite of what I was thinking then. Yeah, that the <laughs> that the the yo cre que si is is less certain than yo yo pienso que si. <laughs> Tengo interés. <laughs> <laughs> I think we probably overanalyze it. No, no. No, no, no. I, the, 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 the examples that I saw, mm. I feel like they are very slightly different and they're mm. basically the same. So, mm. yeah, you can see it's, you know, just I think so. And also, me, pale, me parece que sí. Si. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, I know when we translate, it sounds like belief. But mm. like in that language, does it really, you know, well, there's got to be a nuance, <laughs> otherwise there wouldn't be two different words. There, you know, there's always a nuance with different words in every yeah, language. That's, that's mm -hmm. So I'm always curious to know the nuance because mm -hmm. if I know the nuance, then I'm able to use it more accurately. And yeah. that's, you know, my eventual goal. And so since we're right here, let's talk about it. <laughs> let's talk about it. So, yeah. Um, any new insights into that? Well, <laughs> I am doing my research too <laughs> here on the <laughs> internet. Um, yeah, I found that pensar is more like <clears throat> and think is more like uh, creer. Oh, like, okay. No, it's the opposite. Yeah. No, one second. Sorry. <laughs> Actually, yeah, pensar to think. Okay. For, no, un momento. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pensar to think. Mm. And creer to believe. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, I would say, oh, creo que va a llover. I think it's going to rain. Mm. I believe, I believe it's, going, it's to rain. going to rain. Yeah. I believe it's going to rain. And I we say that. Say, yeah. um, I would say, I think about you. Mm. Mm, that makes sense. Yeah. And if you say, if you say, you know, creo en ti, you're saying like, mm. I believe in you and I believe in your ability to do it. And I, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, so sorry. there, so yeah. So there, the nuance is easier to feel mm. versus when you're, when you're agreeing with something or disagreeing with something. So, hmm. Okay, so uh, it sounds like then in Spanish culture to say, yo creo que si, when you say like, I believe so, or I believe so, and mm. you're saying that in response to someone's thinking or their opinion or whatever, then it seems less, or it sounds like you're saying to me, yeah, it seems less, um, Okay, let me say it the other way. Let's say someone like says something that you don't agree with and you say, oh, yo no creo que si, right? There, it sounds less uh, confrontational than say, yo no pienso que si. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Because yo no pienso que si is saying like, that's not what I think, <laughs> you know? Versus like, oh, I don't believe that. And so since the belief is contained within me, the other person is like, oh, okay, you believe this and I believe that and it's no problem. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, hmm. interesting. Yes, exactly. It's more like what you actually believe it's true. Your mm -hmm. so que si. Um, I think it's similar to English when you agree to, so in the case when you are agreeing, like you can say either I believe so or I think so, right? Mm. They are somewhat similar. Yeah, I believe so. What do you think? Mm. Muy bien. So, yeah, we'll let that percolate in our minds. <laughs> mm, muy bien. So, 
Él no lo piensa or él no lo cree. Yeah. Can't believe it. Yeah, but in other situations, the nuance is a lot easier to feel. Like, yo pienso, yo pienso, uh, yo pienso en ti. Did you say yo pienso en ti? What did you say? Yeah, mm -hmm. so like, I'm thinking of you. I'm thinking about you versus yo creo en ti. Like, I believe in you that, oh, you can do this. I, I have faith in you. Sí. Muy bien. Clase. Sí. ¿Tiene el gato Floyd solo un problema? Sí. No. Cuatro. Sí. Él no tiene solo un problema porque tiene cuatro problemas. Sí. Uh -huh. ¿Y clase? Sí. Sí. Uh, he doesn't... Um, tengo yo cuatro problemas también. No, no tienes. Ah, uh, tú, tú, tú tienes, uh, no lo sé, pero quizás muchas problemas. <laughs> sí, yo tengo solo un. Problema. Oh. Sí. Mm -hmm. Sí. Yo tengo solo tu... un problema. Jesse? ¿Qué es tu problema? ¿Cuál es mi problema? Mm. Wow, wow, sí, wow. clase. Sí, clase. ¿Cuál es mi problema? Lo que uh -huh. tengo. ¿No tienes un gato? Mm. <risa> No Pero quieres. no es no es un problema porque yo estoy viviendo en un lugar, en un apartamento uh -huh. donde yo no puedo tener un gato. Entonces, uh -huh. sí. entonces no es un problema. Entonces no el, lugar, un problema. el lugar es un problema porque oh. no permite un gato. Ah, tú piensas que mi lugar, mi apartamento, es el problema porque no permite un gato. Sí. Mm, es posible que sea el problema. ¿Qué piensas tú, Jesse? Ah, tu problema. Hmm. O oh, oh, uh, tu apartamento y... El gato. ¿Cuál? ¿Cuál es mi problema? Su Ching ah. piensa que mi problema es con mi apartamento o que yo no tengo un gato, pero mi problema sería anything. Ok. Uh, tu problema es... Uh... Tú tienes un, una vecina que no le gusta tu música uh, cuando tú to, tocas el piano. Oh, tú piensas que yo tengo un... Uh, un... Una vecina. Uh, Una vecina. A neighbor. A neighbor. Yeah, neighbor. Is that right? Yeah. Es correcto? Sí. Okay. Correcto. La mm. vecina. Yeah. Una vecina is uh, a female. Um, oh. Yeah. Yeah. You got La a neighbor, vecina. a female neighbor that doesn't like your mm. uh, music when you play the, the piano. Vecino. I otro. Hay otra palabra para neighbor. You, you're looking for some something sounds like neighbor. <laughs> no, I just think that I know a different word. I feel but like I can't I've, remember what um, it is. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I heard something else before too. N e i g h b o r. Yeah, neighbor. Uh, anyway. Sí, oh, Jesse piensa que yo tengo una vecina. Ok, 
que a ella no le gusta la sueña, la sueña, la sueña, sueña, the sound, las la la música, oh sí, el sonido, el sonido uh, del piano cuando yo toco cuando yo toco el piano. Mm. Pero creo que uh, tú, uh, tú eres muy talented, uh, talentoso. <laughs> I don't know how you say ¿Tú, that. ¿Tú crees que yo tengo mucho talento para tocar talento, el piano? Talento. Sí, pero uh. una vecina es estúpida. La vecina es mala. Oh. Sí. La, la vecina es mala, en tu opinión. Mm. Ya, yeah, ¿cuál es mi problema, en tu opinión? ¿Qué piensas tú? Yo pienso que tu problema es que tú quieres... Uh... <risa> bueno. Yo sé que tú quieres aprender muchos idiomas oh. y tú no tienes mucho tiempo para aprender muchos mm. idiomas. No tengo suficiente tiempo para, sí. Sí, para eso. Tú necesitas uh, dormir a veces. Sí, a veces. Sí. Hmm. Entonces hay tres opiniones del problema de mí <ríe> de mi problema sí mm. una de las personas en nuestra clase piensa que yo no tengo suficiente tiempo para aprender para para adqui sí, ad adquirir para adquirir uh, acquire para adquirir todos los idiomas que yo quiero adquirir y una de las personas en nuestra clase piensa que tengo una vecina a quien no le gusta el sonido del piano en mi apartamento cuando yo toco el piano. Mm. Y la otra persona en nuestra clase piensa que yo no puedo tener un gato porque estoy en un apartamento donde los gatos no están permitidos. El apartamento no permite los gatos. Entonces, este es mi problema. Hmm. Pero, ¿qué es la verdad? Oh. Hmm. ¿Qué es Ahora mejor? mismo. Oh, mejor. ¿qué es mejor? Ahora hmm. mismo, describe <risa> la situación sobre los problemas. Pero, al principio, Jesse. Sí. ¿Qué piensas, Suching? ¿Qué es mi pro ¿Cuál es mi problema? Suching piensa que su problema es uh, tú quieres un gato, pero tu apartamento no permite uh, los gatos. Y... Tú eres muy triste porque tú quieres um, un gato, pero no creo que tú quieres un gato. Sí, sí. En mi opinión. En tu opinión. Uh, la, let's use la dueña. This will make more sense because we're saying my apartment doesn't allow it, but it's not my apartment that doesn't allow it. Uh, la dueña del apartamento o la dueña de mi apartamento the owner of my my yeah. landlady yeah would we say that for landlady the owner see sí. 
la dueña o la arrendataria. Oh my god. <laughs> arrenta, arrenta, da, no, I can't even say that. Uh, Tataria. No, 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 Go back to the apartment. La casera. Casera. Oh, la casera arrendadora. Mm, arrendadora. Okay, that arrendadora I can do. It's like a rent. Arrendadora. Arrendadora. La dueña de mi apartamento or la arrendadora. The renter. La arrendadora de mi apartamento no permite los gatos. Mm. Sí. Creo que sí, Jesse. Cree, lo siento, crees que sí. Crees que sí. ¿Es la verdad, Jesse? Do ¿Es I mi think... problema? No. No, no. no. Tú, tú no crees que sí. No. Tú no crees que es mi problema. Es, es un buen idea. Oh, es un buen idea. Uh, uh, pero no creo que sí. Mm, ok. Suchen, ¿qué piensa ya él? ¿Cuál es mi problema? Ya él piensa que tú no tiene, no tienes su uh, tiempo, no, no tienes suficiente tiempo para uh, adquirir. Adquirir, sí. Adquirir. 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 Para adquirir muchas idiomas. Mm. Sí. No tengo suficiente tiempo para adquirir todos los idiomas mm -hmm. que yo quiero adquirir. Mm. Sí. ¿Crees que sí? ¿Qué crees que es la verdad? Mm, sí, yo creo que Oh. Yo creo que sí, también. ¿Cambiaste tu opinión? Did you change your opinion? Oh, no, no, no. Yo, oh. yo creo que tú tienes muchos problemas. Y... Oh, yo, ¿tú crees que yo tengo muchos problemas? Sí. Oh, no. Y, y ya eres correcto, ya sí es correcto. Y somos... Oh. Y hay otra más, pero no lo sé. Puedes, puedes decir, puedes decir, how do you say you can tell us? Sí, so puedes, puedes uh, decirnos, a, decirnos a nosotros, sí. Or just puedes decirnos. Sí. Decirnos. Mm. Sí. Or vas a decirnos. Vas a decirnos. You yeah. are going to tell us? Sí. Vas a decirnos. Sí. Okay. Or. <coughs> sí. Mm. Mm. Tú piensas que yo voy a decirnos, decirles. <laughs> ¿Cuál es mi problema? Pero ¿No? yo no necesito. <risa> yo no, yo no lo necesito. Yo no necesito decirles. Sí. So ahora mismo. No. Ya él. Sí. ¿Qué piensas, uh, Jesse, que es mi problema? Jesse piensa. ¿Cuál que es mi tú... problema? Ajá. ¿Cuál es tu problema? Jesse piensa que tú tienes una vecina que o una arrendadora que hmm, no permite a los no no sí que se queja de la música que se queja de la música. Se jejeja. Y... What is that? 
Okay. Say something. <laughs> Say queja. Ah. Oh. She complains herself. Herself, she complains. Yeah. So say. <laughs> it's the same in German, too. You have to like complain yourself. So say herself complains. Say, say queja. <laughs> say queja. <laughs> say queja. Mm. Say queja sobre. Okay. Sí, se queja de la música, de la música del piano. Mm. Que está muy alta. Mm. ¿Y <coughs> qué crees tú? ¿Crees que es la verdad? ¿Crees que es verdad? Mm. Ahora que lo pienso, ahora que lo pienso, yo creo que lo que Sujin dice también es verdad, que mm. todo es verdad, todos los problemas son verdaderos. Tú oh, tienes no. una vecina que se queja de la música, tú quieres un gato, tú no tienes tiempo para aprender suficiente, tú no tienes suficiente tiempo para adquirir los idiomas. Mm. Ahora mismo. Ah. Describe la situación sobre los problemas, well, sobre las opiniones de ustedes, de mis problemas, que yo supposedly te tengo. So, so, yeah, supposedly. Anyway, um, ahora mismo supuestamente sí sí yo supuestamente tengo um, let's give you dos minutos dos uh, dos minutos veinte dos segundos hay preguntas no ok listos o listas bueno well, listos que ya es ya <laughs> listos fuera
Okay, talk the whole time. More than 50%? Less than 50%. And confidence in my production. I don't even need to look at any words. It just totally just comes out. Four, if I think about it or, okay. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Why don't I get that? Oh, <laughs> you're so not confident in your production. <laughs> oh no, I'm a terrible teacher. Okay. Um, what was I gonna do? Oh, oh, I changed this to leaser because renter is a little confusing because renter could really, if you think about it, go either way. The person who is renting the apartment or the person who is renting to the person. So just change it to leaser. Um ba -ba -ba -ba. Okay, classe. E. E. Ahora mismo, ustedes piensan que tengo tres pro problemas, pero sí. no es la verdad porque yo les dije que yo tengo solo un problema. ¿Sí? Yo les dije que yo tengo solo un problema. Mi problema es que yo tengo muchos problemas. Sí. Sí. Mi, sí. Mi problema es que yo tengo solo un problema. Y mi problema es que yo tengo muchos problemas. Sí. sí. Entonces, ustedes tenían, uh, tenían correcto, tenían, yeah. Do you say had right in Spanish too? Um, you actually say, no, you say, tú estabas en lo correcto. En lo correcto. So, ustedes sí, ustedes estaban en lo correcto. Sí, sí, estaban en lo correcto, pero no estaban totalmente en lo mm -hmm. correcto porque es, uh, ustedes... Pensaban que yo tengo muchos problemas, pero no es la verdad porque yo tengo solo un problema. ¿Qué es? Yo tengo muchos problemas. Mm. Es un poco complicado porque soy una persona complicada. Sí. Yo sé. Pero, pero, ¿tú necesitas mudarse? Uh, en una casa y todos los problemas resolver? Uh, with, um... No, porque si una persona tenga una... Uh, no. Si una persona tiene una casa, sí. entonces tendría demasiado problemas. ¿Qué? Oh, necesito esto fix. Necesito esto fix. Necesito. I don't keep saying esto, but este, este. I always have to fix this and fix that and this, that. No. No, no, Tú no. Tú eres negativo. Tú eres sí, negativo. soy un chico negativo. <laughs> sobre, lo, sobre las casas. Porque, oh. Juan, <laughs> sí. Sí, tengo, tengo muchos uh, amigos que tienen casas y cada día, cada día se quejan sobre los problemas de las casas. Sí. Mm. Entonces, no quiero tener una casa. Ahora mismo. 
Es posible que yo, yo, um, yo cambiara, cambiara mi uh, opinión, pero ahora mismo no. No, 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 no. No. Sí. Okay. Suching. ¿Tienes tú un, un problema también? Yo tengo. Uh, um, ok, yo tengo muchos problemas. ¿Tú <risa> tienes muchos problemas? ¿En sí. serio? Sí, pero. Oh, yo creo. Yo. Yo. Anyway, never mind. Go. <laughs> no estoy de acuerdo. <laughs> no estás Yo, de yeah, acuerdo. I, yeah, I want no, no, to. No, no, no. Yeah, anyway. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Sí, 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 estoy sí. muy feliz. Pero mm -hmm. uh, realmente no tengo problema. Lo siento, Nathan. Oh, tú no tienes... Problemas. No. Muy no. bien. Su Ching mm -hmm. es una persona sin problemas. Estoy sí. celoso. Yo, sí. yo también. Yo oh, también. Jesse oh. también es una persona sin problemas. Mm. Sí. Es, Entonces, estoy, estoy jubilada mm. y tengo... Uh, retired. Mm. Yeah, jubilada, retired. Uh, tengo suficiente comida, suficiente ropa, un gato, una casa. Suficiente gatos. <laughs> uh, ¿Quieres tener más gatos? Uh, no, una, una, un gato es suficiente. Es suficiente. Oh, muy bien, muy bien. Uh, momento. Um, Uh, so, Su Ching es una persona sin problemas. Jesse es una persona sin problemas. Entonces, Floyd y yo estamos en un club. Sí. El club de las personas y los gatos que tienen problemas. Prometico. Hmm. Prometico. Uh, no. sí. <laughs> ¿Ya él tienes tú un problema o...? Más que un uno. Mm. ¿Estás tú en el club de Suching y Jesse? El club de las personas sin problemas. Uh, sí, yo creo que yo no tengo problemas grandes. Yo tengo problemas chicos, problemas chiquitos. Para mí no son problemas. Entonces mm -hmm. yo estoy en mi club de las personas sin problemas. Oh, pero tú nos dijiste que tú tienes chiquitos, chiquitos problemas. Entonces tú no puedes entrar en el club de las personas sin problemas porque una persona... Necesita tener uh, nunca problemas. Du nunca, nunca problemas. Ah, nunca bien. problemas. No. Nunca. Nada. Ningún problema. Ningún. Pero, there we go. That's the word. Ningún problemas. I was like, nunca does not work. That's never. Sí. Ningún problemas. Entonces, tú tienes tu propio club. <risa> el club de las personas con chiquitos problemas. ¿Sí? Sí. sí. Okay. Es sí. mi, es mi cuento. <risa> Entonces, yo te dije, tú, <risa> tú tienes, tú tienes tu propio club. El club de las personas uh, sin problemas grandes, pero con problemas pequeños. Sí. Y Su Ching y Jesse están en el club de las personas sin problemas 
y Floyd y yo están, no, estamos en el club de las personas y los gatos que tienen demasiado problemas. Sí. Sí, muy bien. Jesse. Sí. ¿Quién está en tu club? ¿En mi club? Sí, yeah, en tu club. Oh, oh, es Suchín. Suchín y yo no, tiene, uh, no tenemos problema. So, es muy es fácil. Ah, ¿sí? es, es la mejor. Sí. sí, ¿Es, sí. El, ¿El mejor o la mejor? Es el mejor. El mejor. Es el mejor. Yeah, sí. es el mejor. Mm. ¿Verdad? Solamente feliz. 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 Solamente. Happiness. How do you say happiness? Uh, felicidad. Felicidad. No, no. Felicidad. Sí, mm. felicidad. Um, sí. Suching. Mm? Sí. Estaban. Uh, lo siento. Estaba él en. Uh, en ustedes club en ya yeah, en ustedes club ya él ya estaba ya él sí y ya él quiere uh, oh, su club uh, y ya él quiere ver ver come back <laughs> ah, uh, revo, uh, volver ya yeah, volver Yeah, volver, volver o volver. regresar, no, no. Uh -huh. Vol volver o regresar. Oh. Volver. <laughs> volver. <laughs> yeah, return. Mm, mis grupo. Mm, revolve. It's kind of like revolve, but yeah, return. Yeah, return. Yeah. Mm. Ya, ya él no quiere entre tus grupo es muy <risa> neca uh, triste es un, un club grupo. triste es un grupo muy triste mm, es un club triste es un grupo triste sí sí triste sí. club triste mm. Mm. sí ya él estaba en su club en sus club sí pero no, no está ahora mismo en el club de las personas sin problemas porque ya él, ya él tiene problemas pequeños. Sí. Él cree que los problemas pequeños no, no son problemas para él, pero no es la verdad porque... Son problemas pequeños y los problemas, cada día los problemas, um, los problemas le, di, uh, le dicen, estamos aquí, estamos aquí, estamos aquí. <ríe> Somos problemas. <ríe> Entonces no puede eh, no puede estar en sus club en su club mm -hmm. en sus club sí. yeah. muy bien yo tampoco sí yo tampoco Ok. so um, hemos terminado hemos terminado pero uh, describe la situación so um, ya yeah, describe la situación por favor oh, ok es una situación muy grande complicada sí. y complicada también so quién tiene un gato no quién no tiene un gato y ¿Cuáles son las proble los problemas de Floyd y de mí? ¿Y cuáles clubs hay? Ok, ok. Pues Elena tiene un gato y Jesse también tiene un gato. 
que sí tiene un gato atigrado y es de color gris. Yo quiero un gato, um, pero yo quiero un gato amarillo. Pero Jesse dice ¡Naranja! que el gato es naranja. Jesse dice que el gato es naranja, que no, no hay gatos amarillos, que no existen gatos amarillos. Pero yo digo que sí, yo digo que sí, yo creo que sí. Y bueno, también nosotros creemos que tú tienes muchos problemas o nosotros creíamos que tú tenías muchos problemas. Yo creía que tú no tenías tiempo para estudiar muchos idiomas. Jesse eh, creía que tú tenías tu arrendadora, uh, te quejaba de la música y Sujin creía que tú también, que tú no tenías tiempo, que tú, que tocar el piano no estaba permitido, que tener gatos. No, sí, ten gatos, sí, gatos. Ah, sí. Que tener gatos no estaba permitido. Y tú nos dijiste la verdad. La verdad es que tú tienes solo un problema y el problema es que tú tienes muchos problemas. Sí. Entonces, tienes muchos problemas. Y hay un club, hay un club. ¿Solo para... un club? Bueno, ¿no hay dos clubes o tres, tres clubes? Tres clubes, sí. Ok, hay un club para las personas con problemas. Creo que es tu club, el club de las personas con problemas. Y gatos, y los gatos. Y gatos, ajá, las problemas, personas con problemas y gatos. Hay otro club de las personas sin problemas, es el club de Jesse y de Suying, es su club. Y también eh, hay un club para las personas con problemas pequeños, para las personas con problemas pequeñitos, pequeñititos. Es mi club. Eh, sí. Tú tienes tu propio club. Tengo mi propio club y se acabó sí. el tiempo. Muy bien. Tú estabas en el club de Suching y Jesse, pero ahora mismo no. Lo siento. Yo quiero volver. Maybe, maybe later you can get back in. We'll see. Okay. We fix sí. this problema pequeño. Sí. Uh, who wants to go next? Suching or Jesse? I don't mind. Okay, then you go. Okay. ¿Lista? Sí. Fuera. Lista. Hay tres, okay. Hay tres grupos uh, y el grupo número uno es, uh, es um, un grupo, uh, un grupo que, um, un grupo, un, um. un grupo oh de God. quién, un grupo de oh. quiénes. Ok, un grupo de quiénes. Uh, Oh, no, that was a de question. Quién, de, ¿De quién? ¿De quién? Con... De las personas o de, de, las las, personas, de los gatos. Mm. Uh, de las personas con muchos problemas. Mm. Y el grupo... Mm, y el grupo incluto... Include? Incluto. Mm. Incluto Nathan y Floyd y uh, quizás Elena. Uh, y otras personas mm. Mm. y el grupo número dos es uh, el grupo de, de de las personas sin problema sí y el grupo incluido Jesse incluido. y yo yeah. incluido Jesse y yo y uh, en, en, es, en este grupo, solamente feli, felicidad. Mm. Uh, y, uh, hay o, y hay, o, hay otro grupo nuevo, mm. que es uh, el grupo de Yaer, Yaer 
estaba en mi grupo, pero ahora mismo ya él tiene problemas pequeños, problemas sí. pequeños. Y así que we kick him out. Sí. <risa> <risa> Así, Así que, que no puede, no puede estar, sí. No puede, no puede stay. Oh my God, stay. How do you say no, stay? Uh, oh, incluir, incluir, ok. Incluir. No puede. Uh, Learn that word. Uh, yeah, um, wait. Uh, stay, 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 stay. I can like, I, uh, sí, I can, que like Yeah. Quedarse. Quedarse. Y mm. así que no puede quedarse en mi grupo. Mm. Sí. Mm. Yeah. Muy bien. Incluir. Incluir. El grupo incluye a Nathan y Floyd. En el grupo están <coughs> incluidos. Mm. En el grupo are included. So... In the group are included Nathan and Floyd. En el group están incluidos Nathan y Floyd. Hay un grupo, or hay un club. Yeah? Hay un club. I'm saying club because a club, there are rules about who can be in the club and who can't be in a club. But a group, there might not necessarily be rules about your group. You know, it's just a group. We're just grouping people together. So that's why I chose the word un club. Because the rule to be in the club is that you don't have any problems. So, tú no puedes, tú no puedes um, quedarse en el club, ya, porque tú tienes problemas pequeños ahora mismo, pero tú estabas en el club. Muy bien. Jesse, describe la situación, por favor. Okay. Um... Two personas tiene, tienen gatos. Uh, Elena tiene, tiene un gato Floyd y yo tengo un gato Buddy. Pero Nathan y Suchin y Yael no tienen gatos. Um, uh, Yael quiere un gato pero no tiene un gato ahora, pero mm. él tiene un gato amarillo. <laughs> sí, quiere un gato amarillo. Amarillo. Eh, no, no, no. Amarillo. Amarillo. <laughs> amarillo. Sí, uh, pero, um, um, Nathan tiene mucho... Talk to problemas. me about me. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Um, That's okay. Uh, Nathan, tú, tú tienes muchos problemas, pero tú piensas, piensas, piensas mm -hmm. que yo pienso, uh, sí, tú piensas que yeah, yo pienso tú que, piensas que pienso uh, okay. tú tienes un problema. Sí, y, tengo solo un problema. Solo un problema eh, y tu problema es tú tienes, tú tienes Muchos problemas. Sí, tengo muchos uh, problemas. Y, y um, tú eres en un club por personas y gatos que tienen muchos pro, uh, uh, tiene problemas. Sí, tienen problemas. Sí, estoy en el club, sí. Uh, tú, tú estás en el club y Floyd el gato estás en Uh, el mismo club. Sí. Um, pero uh, Su Ching, Yael y yo uh, uh, en el pasado uh, es, estaba en el mismo club. Sí, pero, estábamos juntos. Sí. Pero ahora um, Yael ya no en Oh, sorry, I was just Keep getting going. a roll. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, Yael's no longer in our club because sí. he had a problem. He had sí. a little problem. <laughs> sí. Ahora mismo no está en su club. Sí. 
con sí. ustedes. Qué triste. Sí, sí yo Pobre estoy... Sí, yo estoy en el club de las personas y los gatos que tienen problemas. Y Suching y Jesse, ustedes están en el club de las personas sin problemas. Y hay una regla que dice que si una persona tiene problemas, entonces no podría que, quedarse o no podría estar en el club. Porque uh, necesito tener, uh, lo siento, necesita tener ningún problema. Y ya él estaba en el club con ustedes, pero ahora mismo él tiene problemas pequeños. Entonces, tiene su propio club. El club de las personas que tienen problemas pequeñitos. 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 Sí. Pequeñitos. Pequeñititimos. I don't know. <laughs> Muy bien. Okay. That was fun. Sí. Yes, I like it. Yeah. Pequeñitos. Tititimos. <laughs> Need to add those to our list. Muy bien. Save you, save your chat so you can add those to our our list. Oh, sí. Pequenititos. Hay preguntas. No. Comentarios. It was fun. We just uh, we just kind of let it flow tonight. So. Mm. Yeah, I'm surprised, you know, every time we look at the same picture, we always come up something. <laughs> this is like amazing. I know. Yeah. It's like, I just kind of put the picture up there. I don't even know why. I mean, it's just something to look at, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Exactly. That's why I'm thinking, you know, like when I prepare my class, you know, but I, 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 I kind of want to change the picture anyway, because, mm. you know, I, I, I want them to feel we're doing something different. Maybe we're still talking about the same thing. We didn't care, but yeah. But, yeah, I, I mean, as a student, do you even notice the pictures there? Yeah, I do. Oh. I do yeah. notice, but I know you're gonna come up with something different. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah and it's yeah. his story. Don't forget, it's his story. Right, it's my story. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you know, we just have. Well, I guess we did end up just talking about problems, didn't we? So mm. I guess the slide is fitting, but yeah, I forget the slides even there. <laughs> Yes. But it's mm. just, you know, something to stare at when you mm -hmm. look at the screen and yeah. And it hey, keeps you... me it also keeps me from putting too many words on the screen too. Mm, yeah, yeah. So if yeah. I have all this space to write stuff, then I'm gonna fill it up. So I let this I let this space or this slide just, you know, be there mm. and and don't, I mean mm -hmm. I could click one more time. Oh, what the hell? Yeah. Uh, I could click one more time and then, okay, now we have, but you guys know this, so I don't need to have that there. I also Suching have this one too. Sorry, yeah, Su Ching. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, uh, would you ever think about uh, doing some, um, you know, activities where we, we share different photos of us, but well, it's your, I don't know your curriculum, but I'm thinking sure. oh. it would be fun to use our actual picture occasionally. Yeah. Yeah, and then sure. we describe the story in the picture. And then we get to see, you know, us in different, where maybe when we're traveling or when we are a baby, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just think it would be a fun topic to, to use. Yeah, absolutely. That's, you know, that's part of TPRS and yeah. 
There's you picture still, talk, you, movie talk, uh, hmm. art talk, music talk, um, si. card talk. I mean, there's all sorts of different talks. Yeah. I just don't do them because I, well, I haven't been trained in them. Not that I have to be trained in them, but I haven't been trained in them. So they're not in my thinking, you know, they're just not even in my, mm. in my, in my mind. So yeah. I kind of, sort of, kind of mm. a little did a picture talk in German and Korean Mm. um that has gone on for 20 or not quite 20 classes maybe I started at class six or seven so maybe I don't know nine classes or something Mm. and we we've only revealed the first picture (laughs) oh god there are five pictures and we've only revealed the first picture (laughs) yeah my German classes are are really quite different from from my span from the Spanish class but mm. also this Spanish class is intermediate so you know that's oh, okay. that's also different too mm. yeah. um but yeah I do I do things quite differently in German not I mean if you know what you're looking if you know what you're looking for then you would see the difference in my German class versus the Spanish class if you don't know what you're looking for you'd be like well it's the same thing you know but you know well the german class we don't have a lot of words so we can't um but our story is a thousand words this week oh my god (laughs) yeah it's the same (laughs) same words regurgitated (laughs) oh my goodness it's his fault i dreamed in german all one night you know i I got that story and i was reading it and i was reading over it and it was just like all night long, I was dreaming in German. <laughs> the same story. Yeah, like our, day. our story is uh, got really deep roots. <laughs> uh, you know, there's just. But we don't have that many words, so that's why we have to just keep. Well, I mean, we have. Saying it different ways. Words, I mean. Yeah, you got a lot of words. <laughs> yeah. And now we have all this, you know. Fancy color, color coding. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, 1010, right? But yeah, it's just lots of repetitions for you to, for you to get, you know, what's going on. And that's, that's why like, you know, Su Ching, uh, you talked about uh, showing pictures or something, you know, doing picture talk mm. uh, and in the German class, I don't think we could do that because we don't have enough vocabulary to do mm. it. Mm. Uh, like you can't well, say there's a man, there's a man and there's a woman and and there's their car and the car is this color and mm. they're outside in the woods. You know, we can say that in Spanish, but I couldn't say that in German. Mm. Uh, well, we I mean we could still do exactly what she's saying, but what we would talk about would be very different from what we would talk about with. Yeah. Um, you know, we yeah. could talk about like what color something is now that we know all the colors. <laughs> well, not all the colors, but Marana. you know, we no, I mean in German, you know. Oh, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, we could talk about what there is and what there isn't. And yeah. We could say, you know, are there any of the people in our story in there? No, they aren't in there. Um, you know, there's, there. that's a challenge you just uh, I'll make it work <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go for two hours just talking about this picture <laughs> see what you've done Suchin. no 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 I think that the, gauntlet form. <laughs> the picture talk is like you know Nathan showed you an example about his own picture and mm. the next time you can use Jesse's picture mm. but then what are you going to talk it's really you know there's no certain fixed you no, know, no. thing you have to talk. Yeah, no. just use the picture as a you know as a sh- focal sharing. point. Yeah. yeah, focal point. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it, it's I, I feel like sometimes the story it's a bit tricky because you kind of want to encourage your student what he said is right, mm. but then it's going to all over the place, so mm. it's really hard to focus on one direction. Mm. So that's one thing I'm still learning. I don't know how to drag them back because I don't want to discourage them. Right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. So um, it just depends on the 
the level of the student. Mm. You know, so if the student is more intermediate, then you have um, what Blaine calls divergent retell. So they're still retelling the story mm. mostly, but they diverge. They go this way. And mm. so when when there's a divergent retell, then as the teacher, you know, this is, again, I've said this before, but this is where my edge is in terms of teaching you all Spanish, is that mm. I'm not able to actually contain all the language that you guys put out. So I'm right at my edge. And this is why Yale, I, we need Yale to be here most times or, you know, to be checking the story because we, you need to be a teacher who can contain all the language. Now in Mandarin, you're going to be able to do that just fine. Mm. So you, with your intermediate or your advanced students, you can wrap your metaphorical arms around everything that they say. Mm. And so what you do is you just reflect to them what they've said. And as a, as a teacher, you pick out the points where they where they slipped and there's a learning gem, something that you could reflect back to them that they might possibly hear the difference. You don't say everything back. You mm. just listen for the things that uh, it, it could be a learning gem, a learning opportunity for them to hear something. Mm. Um, and so then you reflect that little bit back to them. And uh, maybe they hear it, maybe they don't. But if you don't provide the environment for them to hear it, they're never going to hear it. So you just reflect to them slowly. You slow down when you get to the point where um, there's the learning gem to make it obvious. And then um, if you have varying levels of students in a class, like if it's a group class, then you're going to restate the story in simpler, well, I don't want to say simpler, but in less divergent language for the rest of the class to reground them mm. because they're not going to be able to follow everything that that student just did. Yeah. 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 So you just restate it back in, you know, the, the more common language among everyone. That way mm. you let the divergent student go off and you acknowledge that, Oh yeah, that was right. And this, that, and the other thing and you reflect to them, but then you re recenter it for the rest of the students in the group. Yeah. Um, with your beginning students, you're not going to have that as much, but we want to encourage them to create as well. Uh, but you're going to have a lot more repetitive retells where they're basically saying the same thing. And their reflection is easier because there's just less language. And with your advanced students, you're going to do a lot less as a teacher, a lot less. So you're just, you're sitting back and you just ask a question like, oh, Floyd's blue. Why is he blue? And then you just let your students talk, 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 talk. And then occasionally you say, oh, you think that because he fell into a blue river and now he's forever blue or whatever and you just reflect it back like you're having a conversation and you're and you're remarking on what the student said out of curiosity mm. and you know i could do that in english like if i was teaching an english cbrs i class i could do that because i could contain all that language but mm. here you know i could never teach advanced spanish students yet because there's just no way that i could contain the creative retells mm. that and and the you let the students create the story and who cares where it goes who cares if it follows any sort of pattern any sort of logical order no one cares this literally is just a disguise for them to talk about something yeah and we can add like little details or new words right like for right. example right. this new word quejarse and one at a time so you still are learning more vocabulary right. more structures but diverging and, right? yes and as an advanced teacher uh like as a teacher to advanced students then your sort of your trick or your challenge comes in of like how can i get more repetitions of this new word in into what i'm saying or into what the story is saying so that they can hear it enough times 
if they're not mm -hmm. using it correctly, or I don't want to use the word correctly, but if there's still growth for them in that structure or that word, um, I need to get it in more. I need to cut in myself and talk about myself. You know, so in an advanced class, you talk about, you should always talk about yourself as a, as a, as a teacher, as a language teacher, so that they know how to talk about themselves. If I don't talk about myself in the first person, they have no idea how to talk about themselves. So I want to talk about myself as soon as possible. And I don't always do that well. I forget. Oh, yeah, I got to talk about myself <laughs> and make a story about myself. Otherwise, they don't hear I'm repeating myself. I repeat myself a lot, especially even <laughs> more now in my native language because I'm used to repeating yeah. myself in the foreign language. But um, yeah, you got to talk about yourself. Yeah, I do. I do. I like talking about myself. And, I, you know, after I talk about myself, I'll be like, okay, tell me about my story mm. and then tell me your story. So I, mm -hmm. I quite like it. I think it's really good for the listening. I don't know. Yeah, I just think... Uh, I don't know how I can make sure they learn things. They, of course, they're learning things. Mm. They feel like, okay, today we have a topic, mm. you know? Mm. Uh, say I want them to learn the, the color. Mm. So today we, we focus more on this mm. instead of, okay, just flowing everywhere. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Really, uh, I think it's a mindset shift. So when we're teaching language and I'm still working on these mindset shifts myself. Yeah. It's um, <clears throat> so it's fine to pick a topic. It's fine to pick uh, something that you want to work on as a language teacher is totally fine. Just mm. have it loosely held in a hand and ready to throw out the window. <laughs> the moment you sit down it happens to be all the time. I'm like, we're going to do this today. I sit down and literally something new comes to mind. I'm like, whoop, throw it out the window. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, but changing our mindset from, okay, once I find a learning gem of a learning opportunity for the student in the class, this is where I'm going to now, I'm going to go, and I'm just going to limit everything in the class around this. And I'm going to you, especially for the beginners, especially for yeah. the beginners, I'm just going to, okay, we're not going anywhere else. I mean, if the student goes somewhere else, great. I reflect to them. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And then I come back to this and I create multiple stories, parallel stories that follow the same grammar pattern or same thing or whatever that, that the student has given to me that they're, that they're that they have growth yet because they said it in a way that was like, wait, oh, whoops. <laughs> okay, there's growth there. So I'm going to focus on this and I'm going to tend to this, which is why it almost is pointless in a way to make a plan before we teach class because we need our student to give us their, their plan, their learning opportunity, their gem. So... Mm -hmm. Really, the only purpose to making a plan as a teacher is to make ourselves feel calm and relaxed. Because if we're not calm and relaxed, then our class isn't going to go well. So we have a plan that makes us calm and relaxed. Okay, shit hits the fan and I don't know what to do. At least I have this plan. And so now I can relax. But I have to let this plan go. I can't be like, we've got to do this plan because then class is going to suck too because I'm going to feel like oh I didn't do what I wanted to do and then I'm going to maybe resent my student or feel like I'm a bad teacher or you know whatever it is so we have this plan really loosely held we show up to class the student does the thing they describe the situation or the triangle and we notice whoa they really have an area to grow here here's my plan bye <laughs> Thanks for making me feel comfortable. Okay, now I'm going to... I need to go, uh, sweetie. Okay, bye, Jesse. Thank yes. you. Yes. Nos vemos yes. mañana. See you tomorrow. Yes. You. Yeah. Bye. So, yeah, just throw the plan out the window and be like, okay, now this is where we're going to focus. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to talk about me. And I'm going to talk about... the. I'm going to ask the student about them. But then get, you know, if it's a one-on-one -on -one class... 
you know, talk about, talk about um, maybe their brother or their sibling or, you know, get somebody else into the story. Okay. Or talk about me, be like, oh, my Spanish teacher has this thing or this thing and make stuff up about me. Mm. You know, just get somebody, you need to get other yeah. characters into the story. Yeah. Otherwise really you like don't that. get, otherwise oh, you don't get enough repetitions. Mm. And you're trying to, you know, grasp at something to say it more times. If you have three, four, five, uh, this is why I'll, I only want to do group classes because you mm. automatically have real live characters mm. that have real meaning and then don't feel to the student like, why are we talking about this person who's not really even here? And then you got to work to make this person real for your student. Mm because they're not there but in a group class they're there you don't have to make them real it's like even if they're playing a fake character doesn't matter because that person representing that character is actually present in the class and then when they're not present in the class you can still talk about them because they were there and you can also talk about them in the past tense which now you're getting use of past tense because they were in the class but now they're not in the class and it's just, it has so much meaning. Not to say that you shouldn't do one-on-ones or that you can't do it with one-on-ones. You just got to learn how to bring people into, the, or even just tell your student, hey, I'm going to bring in other people into the story. Might seem like, why are you bringing other people into the story? They're not here. It's so that we have more people to talk about, you know, and just tell them point blank. And they'll be, oh, okay. And this is going to help you develop your language. Uh, th there is one very important point that you mentioned uh, there about, okay, finding some point where the student may be stuck at. So then we stick to that point and we basically leave our learning plans. Because I was actually thinking about it, like, in reality, according to the book of TPRS and One Play, what the book says, you, you don't need a plan because eventually all of these things, the grammar topics will come out and you will talk about them in class. But I was trying to think like, okay, maybe, um, I don't know if there are more, some things that are harder to learn for the student mm. and some mm -hmm. others that are easier. So maybe I should stick with a kind of at least some things like, you know, instead of teaching them right away, okay, le dice, se lo dije, well, mm. just with the mm -hmm. basics mm. and still focus on that. And I don't think, I, for example, that I have a problem with uh, when I was practicing with an, um, a student of mine of bringing up some famous people or some famous characters like, oh, Shakira, Michael Jackson, and then just making jokes about them or even Miss Madonna to practice usted, maybe also put this person, tell, okay, now you're going to be Madonna and I'm going to ask you questions. So uh, I talk to them with usted and they notice the difference. So yeah, I don't think that that might be a problem. So and it has both advantages and disadvantages mm -hmm. of uh, group classes and individual classes. But in reality, I think that the group classes would be better because yeah, the student doesn't feel the pressure of always needing to talk. Right, and sometimes right. They don't feel like the pace is too slow. They can because other people are talking, they are listening to them and they don't want to go too fast either. So yeah, and yeah. when you have when you have a group class, you naturally just go slower. And when you go slower, there's deeper comprehension. Even even when the student is feel like I got it, you know, no, you don't got it because look at your production. And I'm not trying to be rude or mean or anything. I, I'm saying that. Your production shows that there's new depths of comprehension that you've yet to acquire. And this is fine. This is the progress. This is the progression. You need more repetitions. So when there are other students in the class, you automatically have an environment where there's going to be more repetitions because you've got more students to talk to. You have mm -hmm. more students who need to repeat it. And then they're going to not repeat it perfectly. So then it's going to give more opportunities for every student to observe the correct language because they're going to have something to compare it to every time one student says it one way, the teacher says it another way, 
this creates all this juxtaposition for students to hear. And like Yala was saying, you're not always on this, you're not, you're not always in the spotlight. So you are able to relax and observe. And there's things that you can notice about the language and about the meaning and about the story that you can't notice when you're in the spotlight. Because there's other things that you're considering when you're in the spotlight and you're producing. When you're just sitting back and listening, you can notice things that you wouldn't notice otherwise. So in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you're removing that opportunity from the student to just observe. Mm. Unless you like played something, you know, or played a video and they observed the video, but that's not as authentic or real as having real people really there interacting to observe. <laughs> You know, you know, yeah. you know what else I do? I actually, well, besides, of course, the class time, because we only the, the intention here is comprehensible learning at acquisition. So I tell them, OK, uh, what you can do is install some extensions. There are actually some Chrome extensions uh, that allow you to put double subtitles on every mm -hmm. video, mm -hmm. either in Netflix or in YouTube. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I tell them you can do those. Um, watch them as most. Um, yeah, as much as you can. Uh, so that would be their, their immersion. The, the other mm -hmm. learning part that they are missing, like, okay, I need to know more words or they feel like, yeah, they, they can expose themselves to as many content as right. they want and they can actually practice Spanish because they are reading the translation and they are understanding what they are listening. Mm -hmm. They're exposing mm -hmm. themselves to native, um, native production. So yeah, that's another thing that I recommend them. One thing that I like to add to watching videos um, that you could try with your students or recommend or experiment with is personally, when I understand the movie or the thing that I'm watching, when I understand everything that's happened, my motivation to re-watch that video or that movie is like next to zero. So what I like to do is I like to watch it with subtitles in the language as many times as I can tolerate, you know, not understanding everything and just hearing it a bunch of times, watching it over and over and over as much as I can tolerate so that I could maybe start to comprehend more. And, you know, there's, there's better things to do that with than other things, because when it's a really like an action movie or something where where there's close cause and effect, where what they're saying actually makes something happen, I'm able to interpret what's happening versus a drama where there's lots of like subtext and there's lots of like inference and there's a lot of nebulous stuff that I can't, there's no way I can understand what they're saying, <laughs> you know? Cause nothing is concretely happening or kids shows, watching kids shows where like stuff actually happens when they say something uh, and then only watching that in the target language or target subtitles so that I can actually pinpoint what each word is I'm doing that as many times as I want okay my motivation to re-watch it again is going to be pretty high because I didn't understand everything that happened then once I've watched it a bunch of times okay now I'll turn on the double subtitles and now I'll be able to understand everything that I was hearing so many times. And it will really, you know, be a deeper, comprehensible experience for me. And then most likely I won't be able to watch it one more. Maybe if I'm really disciplined, I can make myself watch it another time with, without the English there. But now that I know what's actually happening, I want to see what happens next. You know, I want to watch the next thing. And then the other thing I want to say about what you said, Yad, is the research is pretty overwhelming that there's a natural progression of acquisition in terms of grammar structures and, um, you know, what, what is acquired first, second, third, fourth. It's pretty, it's pretty clear. So I do believe in exposing students to... Um, you know, like higher levels of language early on so that they're hearing it, but keeping those limited 
and also not expecting them to produce that language. Because they can usually comprehend some of that stuff, but not necessarily produce it because it's in the later stages of acquisition. So like if then clauses and stuff like that, like you can kind of understand it, but production is a whole nother matter. Mm. So, um, but then other features of the language, like in German and in Spanish, agreement and gender, we want to have those right up front at the very beginning, because there's such a deep intuitive understanding of the language. And so we need to compare and contrast those like at nausea, like ridiculous amounts of times so that students can build a correct intuition about the gender and about the case. So they need exposure to that very, very soon. And in Chinese, you know, they need, they're going to get it naturally, these exposure to all these tones, you know, because that's something that is not clear. It's not clear on the surface. So they need lots of, they need lots of contrasting and exposure to those so that they can create an accurate intuition from the beginning for the language. Because we'll develop intuition very fast about the language. We're like, that doesn't sound right. But if our, but if the language we've been receiving isn't accurate, now you two don't have to worry about that because you're both native speakers in the language that you're teaching. But if the input that they haven't been receiving is accurate and hasn't been repetitive and consistent enough. So this you do have to worry about as native speakers. It's gotta be repetitive and consistent. You know, the juxtapositions can't, do you know, you know juxtapositions like you're, you're putting two contrasting things really close to each other they have to be relatively consistent and they can't be um inconsistent and confusing so you just pick two things that you really want to like juxtapose each other and you do that a lot so that they can observe that versus like this one this one this one this one okay i'm just proposing all of these it's like oh my god i don't know what to focus on um but yeah anyway i'm talking a lot so Thanks. Oh yeah, it makes all listening. sense to me, and also the part about videos that I also yeah I've heard about it. I think your idea is very good. Like at least two times, one without anything but the subtitles in the target language. Next time with double subtitles, because what I tell them is that it depends on you, right? In my case, mm -hmm. and also from what I've read in other books, is like for example, we should be exposed to things that where we understand at least 70%, mm -hmm. because if not, it is going to be very frustrating for us. Mm -hmm. But in my case, I, I feel it, for example, when I understand some uh, German or French at 50%, I am like, oh, damn, I need to watch this. But I don't actually watch it again. I don't feel like very motivated. So that mm -hmm. could be my case and not your case. In your case, mm -hmm. you will watch it again. I would, I wouldn't go back. I just go and watch another video or maybe watch the same video board but two days later mm -hmm. and yeah naturally I will understand more after getting more exposure so I've seen because I've noticed the progress like okay this video I watched it uh, like two months ago now you understand a lot more than before that's amazing mm -hmm. and also the thing about yeah the acquisition uh, because actually the book also mentions that part that there is a natural order but I couldn't find any anything or well I haven't done enough research I don't know if there are some papers or articles about, okay, first people learn these things like the articles, then people learn the conjugation of this. I don't know there, if there are some yeah, there's, Well, there are groups. There are groups of concepts that they acquire. So there's like group one, group two, group three, and the majority of the studies have been done in English. I mean, I don't, that I know of, I don't know about um other other languages but um and it's it's more like concepts but then also specific grammar features like um negation or you know pluralization and these kind of concepts they they have a natural progression um in in language acquisition so 
um, and this is what you can expect from your students' production and areas where you want to, you know, focus your your production. But maybe there are things that you can extrapolate or interpolate. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't understand those words as well. But you know, reading the reading the research on English acquisition, there may be some parallels, at least for Spanish, that you could draw perhaps um, to to kind of follow that natural order of of progression. Agreement, I think. A masculine agreement comes before feminine agreement because um, so this was on Spanish because masculine is more common than feminine and um, like always the the masculine um, agreement was was achieved before feminine agreement and mm -hmm. I was like really I think I'm an outlier on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but it was more it was more for me because it's like as soon as I knew that there was agreement and because I you know have German background you know and I'm a fast processor processor so I can monitor my language pretty fast um so like for agreement that is not really too hard in most cases for me but that's more to do with my monitor and not necessarily acquisition Monitor means like correcting your language in your head, you know, watching your language and correcting it as it comes out. That's your monitor. Um, but yeah, German too, I would guess that um, masculine would come first as well, just because in accusative, it's the only thing that changes. So, uh, you know, it's really obvious, but then, I mean, since it doesn't, then the other ones don't change, then maybe it would be easier. I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, so uh, yeah, it makes sense. So I, I will check those studies and see what I find because, mm. for example, what I was thinking was like, okay, maybe follow the curriculum of a book, which is not the most recommended thing. Mm, mm. But with my own experience in learning, for example, uh, it happens, but there are some voids where, okay, the book is okay. Actually, I think that. Yeah, the, the organization of the book of the verbs that they present or like me gusta, me interesa, then we are going to see more irregular verbs then we are going to see other tenses. So at least to me with French, I feel like I feel comfortable with a book because I am actually seeing the difference. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it is more like, okay, this is new to me. And I am also, I think that, yeah, it is easy for me to learn languages. So it is not very hard for me to go from one topic to the other and move on. So I notice the difference like, okay, now I know this new thing, uh, let's move on to the other. But in reality, there are some things like when I was learning German that were presented to me in the books and wasn't, I couldn't understand them until later when I was exposed to more advanced mm -hmm. topics or other things, more exposure. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I don't... <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I think that we need to follow. Well, I mean, really, we just follow where our students lead us. So what what their production, our product, this is why I need more describe the situations all the time. We all need more describe the situations. But in a class, you know, you got to give enough repetition. So circling and triangling takes up time. But and meeting more frequently would also really, really help a lot. But getting your students mm -hmm. to describe and talk so that you can, you listen to their language and you see, wow, that was not strong and healthy. So as a teacher, again, you throw your plan out the window and you focus in on what your student just gave you. Your student or students just gave you exactly what they need you to teach them. They just gave you your lesson. So don't go anywhere else. Don't, don't do anything else. Just, just a focus on this, add in other characters, other storylines or whatever, and, and then wait for their production to strengthen. When their production strengthens, it tells you 
that their comprehension is at a deep level now because they're able to produce it. Now, it's not to say that we can't un introduce anything else or we can't go anywhere else. We want to stay really close to what our students have. They've just given us a gift. I was quoted. Now there's a poster with my actual quote on it. My first quotation ever. <laughs> uh, it says, I don't mind errors, semicolon. They write my lesson plans. So we don't mind the, the errors or learning gems, as I like to call them now, from our students because they, they're gems. They're little gems and gifts that students have given to us that will write our lesson plans as teachers. If we're in an institution, this is another story, unfortunately. And I and I bow down to those of you teaching in an institution. And um, you know, there you've got to find the middle ground. And I don't envy that. I don't envy that position. Su Ching, you're muted. Oh, sorry. I mean, you aren't you working for, I don't know, a school or anything like that? Yeah, but I don't do any TPRS there. <laughs> 